Before I get into the Ethereum analysis, I just wanted to show you, I love it when this happens, I just updated my data for Ethereum and I opened the chart and it's done exactly as I expected. Okay, let's get into it. Hi everybody, this is Lara at PureElliottWave.com. Stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to update you on what I've been up to and what I've got coming up next um, from Pure Elliott Wave. Let's get into some analysis, I'm so sorry, analysis of Ethereum. My last analysis expected a little bit of sideways movement and downward movement, it expected this last hot low and we were just $20 short, the price was just $20 short of my little target I had for that low and now it's moving up quite strongly. So first of all let's step back and look at the monthly chart. Elliott Wave is fractal, you have to fit each degree or each fractal into higher and lower degrees. So I'm going to start with monthly, then we'll do weekly and daily charts and we'll drill down to the day detail in here by the time we get to daily. This is the whole price history of Ethereum. From this low to this high, this upward movement fits beautifully as a 5 wave impulse, primary 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Primary 4 is a triangle, primary 2 is a double zigzag. There's really nice alternation. I am noting the lengths of the waves on this chart to inform my future target calculation and expectations for how long upward movement will last. Within cycle wave 1, primary 3 was 19.36 times the length of primary 1. That is not a Fibonacci ratio, that's just how long that third wave was in relation to the first wave and primary 5 does exhibit a ratio it is 81.51 greater than 2.618 the length of primary 3. The scale doesn't show the distance in terms of price travelled which is the important metric for profit it just because it's on a semi log scale otherwise the chart just wouldn't make sense in these volatile markets. So there is a Fibonacci ratio here between primary waves 5 and 3 and note primary 5 is longer than primary 3 so that's where the most profit is going to be found. Within primary 3 intermediate 3 is 18.24 times the length of intermediate 1 again not a Fibonacci ratio but intermediate 3 is a lot longer than intermediate 1 and intermediate 5 is 7.93 times the length of intermediate 3 again not a Fibonacci ratio but it is longer than the third wave. I cannot label this 1, 2, 3, 4 because 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory and so I will label it 1, 2 and an incomplete 3. Cycle 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. I want to label primary 1 and 2 over now and primary 3 within cycle 3 in its very early stages. Within primary wave 1 I've got the wavelengths here for intermediate and minor degree noted on the chart. Also note that intermediate 3 is longer than intermediate 1, but here for the first time, and it happened with Bitcoin as well, this fifth wave is shorter than the third wave. The fifth wave is longer than the first, but here it's not longer than the third. Primary 2 looks like it's most likely over, an 83% correction of primary 1. Let's take a look at the weekly chart now. Oh, before we get there, along the way up I'll be looking for resistance at this upper edge of this channel. I've drawn it from this high to this high and placed a parallel copy on this low. An overshoot down here, let's look for resistance along the way up. We'll look for a breakthrough, a back test of support and then an increased upward momentum eventually as price may move up and away. Okay, weekly chart, this low here, the end of primary 2, this low here we're looking at primary wave, sorry cycle 3 with primary 1 and 2 complete and primary 3 in its early stages. Noting the lengths within primary wave 1 again on this chart. Within primary wave 3, a reasonable target considering the length of previous waves. For intermediate 3 would be 11.09 times the length of intermediate 1. The target is now at 13704. And the target for primary 3 is for it to reach 11.09 the length of primary 1 at 54226. These are Fibonacci ratios. They are rather extreme Fibonacci ratios. It's a bit of a stab in the dark though. 
these targets, I just don't have a lot of confidence in them. What I'm going to be doing at the end of intermediate three and primary three, once price is broken out above this resistance here to new all-time highs, I expect upward movement to increase in momentum and the following upward move to last just a few short months to be over quite quickly. And while it's underway, I'll be using Elliott Wave to see a completed five-wave impulse for both intermediate three and primary three and I'll be using classic technical analysis quite strongly to identify the end of intermediate and primary three and then I'll look for a dead cat bounce for a possible perfect exit point and depending on how long it takes and how old I am at, this, at that time I may sell my ethereum that I've been holding for a while now. Let's take a look at how intermediate three may be beginning from the end of primary two, the slow down here this point down here. So, so far within primary three, intermediate one and two may be may now be complete. Intermediate two, I had expected it to move lower as a double zigzag. I had expected minor Y to reach a quality in length with minor W. It's pretty close, just under $20 short of my target. So we did get that sideways movement I expected and then a little sharp downward thrust falling about $20 short of my target and now we've got some upward movement. Draw a channel around this downward bear market I've labelled intermediate two from the start to this high. Parallel copy down here, overshoot here, fell a bit short of support here a close and a full daily candlestick above it. This is a classic upward breakout. We may see a little bit of a back test of support. If we see a pullback, look out for support at this trend line. So this is going to be really important for the next mm, two to five weeks on your daily chart. So draw that trend line and look out for support here. Within intermediate three, no second wave correction may move beyond its start, below 1209.2782. So we can have some confidence now in this wave count with a breach of the channel, so I'm moving the invalidation point up. We can have further confidence when we see a new high above 3573.86. That would add substantial confidence to this wave count. If my targets are wrong, they might not be high enough. At the weekly chart level, I know this is a pretty common Elliott wave count for Bitcoin and Ethereum that works for both markets. To see, um, well, you could move all of this down one degree as well to see intermediate one, two, three, four within primary one within cycle three. But here for Ethereum, I'll label it primary degree. It's possible for cycle three that there's primary one, two, three, four, five underway. The target is for five to reach quality in length with three at 5,210. That target is probably woefully inadequate for this wave count. Five is probably likely to be a lot longer than a quality in length with three. The reason why this is my alternate, same as for Bitcoin, the duration of primary wave four, much longer in duration to primary wave two. There's alternation between a zigzag here and an expanded flat here, but it's really common for these cryptocurrencies to exhibit fourth waves that are much more brief than their counterpart second waves, and here primary four is much longer in duration than primary two. It's okay if it's a lower degree, but it's such a high degree that's really unusual. That really does reduce the probability of this wave count. Okay, classic analysis. Let's get through this, or this video is going to be eight years long. That's just a bit much, isn't it? At the weekly chart level, this is a strong weekly candlestick with good push from volume. Support holding now about 1295. Let's look for next resistance about 1700 and a little bit above that about 1800. On balance volume is within a weak range, no signal at the weekly chart level. There's a hammer candlestick pattern at this low, so there's a bullish long lower wick at this low, a move up, test of support, holds, hammer candlestick, moving up and away with push from volume. That's good to see for a bullish case. RSI and money flow both neutral at this time frame. ADX still declining, there's no clear trend. Stochastics neutral, ATR still declining as price falls and then moves sideways, normal behaviour. At the daily chart level, an upward breakout above this area which was resistance which is about 1360 to 1400, a close above that area which was prior resistance, now becomes support. If we see a deeper pullback, look out initially for good strong support about 1400 to 1360. Next resistance above, 
about 1700 Volume is actively pushing price higher. Range is increasing. Now there's an upward breakout. That's really good to see for a bullish case that supports the Elliott Wave analysis. On balance volume broke above weak resistance. This now support line may assist to halt any fall in price. ADX tells us there is now an upward trend. It's nowhere near extreme. RSI in neutral territory, pretty close to overbought. It can get quite deeply overbought for this market and remain there for quite a while while price moves a considerable distance. Only when both of these together get really extreme would we would there be any concern over a bullish trend. That's a, there's a long, long way to go. This is a relatively early stage within the trend despite RSI being close to overbought. Money flow index also neutral. Stochastics overbought but when ADX, oh goodness excuse me, when ADX tells us there's an upward trend we don't use stochastics, we use RSI and money flow because when there's a trend stochastics can remain overbought for quite a long period of time. ATR declining as price moved sideways, now starting to show an increase after that upward breakout. So I'm going to be, this is an update on what's coming up. I'm now in Ecuador, I'll be here for another six weeks and sadly there's no surf. But I do, well not so far, although I'm in this apparent surfing mecca for Ecuador. There is however a decent internet connection so I'm going to focus on work for the next th few weeks. Next week I'll finish off my list of free analysis that you've given me and then I'll institute a voting system. The other two things coming up, I'm doing a couple of supplementary lessons for my Learn Pure Elliott Wave online course and I'll relaunch that and I'll give you a special discounted rate for the relaunch week. And I'm also working on finishing my next online course which is Buy Low Sell High thanks to everyone who voted for that and that was the winner for the title for that online course. It's just nine lessons but it's really carefully curated and it's the one I'm most excited about launching. So within the next five to six weeks I hope both of those courses first to relaunch and then a launch of a new one will be done. So that's coming up soon. If you haven't already got this then please go over to my website and if at the bottom you can click on this link to download a copy a free copy of my little ebook technical analysis it's got some technical analysis basics about trends and channels and candlesticks and scale and a bunch of um, articles that I wrote over the years all rewritten or spruced up and put together in a little bit ebook for you so you can get that free download and when you do that you'll be on my email list which I hardly ever use and I'll only be emailing you if you're on that list if I've got a really important announcement to make like a week special of one of my online courses or something else another free something for you so yeah I recommend that quite a handy little free giveaway there for you thank you so much for watching thank you so much for all the support from everyone subscribing on the YouTube channel and all of my membership at Pure Elliott Wave